Hello and welcome. I am Raghav and today we will learn about conditional statements in Groovy and these are also called as decision making statements. So these are the statements where we can give some condition and based on if the condition is true or false we can uh, perform some operations and in Groovy we have if else and switch case. So these are the two conditional or uh, decision making statements and I will give you examples on how to use them it will be very easy and very interesting and before I do that let me just go to Google and search for Groovy conditional statements so if I just search for Groovy conditional statements I will go to the official Groovy documentation and here if I see uh, we actually have control structures and inside control structures we have conditional structures which is if else and switch case then we have looping and then we have exception handling so these three are actually part of control structures and if I write it here we have control structures or control statements in Groovy and then inside this we have conditional statements or conditional structures and then we have looping and then we have exception handling we will learn all this in the coming sessions but for now we are going to learn about conditional statements so if I go to conditional structures or conditional statement you can see we have if else and then we have switch case now I will explain you in a very easy way I will go to my Eclipse and this is the project we created earlier I will do a right click on the package and go to new other and select groovy type I can also write groovy here and then select groovy type and next and create a groovy class so I will say this is conditional statements and finish and I'll just remove the class I can directly type here so for example I say def num equals 10 now I want to check if number is equals to 10 and based on the condition I want to execute something so I will use if and here after if I will give the condition in the bracket and then a curly bracket start and a curly bracket stop and inside the block I can write any commands or statements so here our condition will be num is equals equals to 10 so we are comparing number to 10 and if this is true it will come inside the if block and here I am just printing number is 10 and I will save this and do a right click run as groovy script and let us see the output and you can see it is printing number is equals to 10 now here what if number is not equals to 10 I will say number equals 11 and if I run this now here you can see nothing is getting printed so what happens is it comes to this if statement checks the condition if this is true it will come inside the if block and execute whatever is there otherwise if it is false it will come out now in case if it is false you want to execute something else then we use else so I can say else and else should follow right after if block there should be no gap or there should be no statements between these if and else and again else and the curly bracket start and the curly bracket stop and here I can again run some other command so I will here say println num is not 10 and if I run this now you can see it is now going to the else block and printing number is not 10 now if you are having a single statement you do not even require this curly bracket so even if I remove this curly brackets from if as well as from else this will work fine if I run this now so this is working fine however if you have multiple statements uh, you should have the curly brackets and it is a good practice to have these curly brackets so you can put them in the if and else block now here if I take a practical example suppose I want to write a program to check number is positive or negative in that case I will use if else I will say if number is greater than 0 then it should be a positive number so I will say 
number is positive and else I will say number is negative so if I run this program now it is saying number is positive because number is 11 and if I say number is minus 11 and run this again here you can see number is negative however if I say number equals 0 and if I run this now here it goes to the else block and prints number is negative however that is not true 0 is not a negative number it is neither positive or negative so what happens here is it just comes to the if block checks the condition condition is false it directly goes to the else block and executes whatever we have written inside else so now to check another condition we can have nested if else and that means we can have if and then again we will say else if and another condition so here I will say if number is equals equals to 0 then we will print number is 0 and then finally we will have the else block and here we will print number is negative so if I run this now here it is printing number is 0 so this is called nested if else and uh, for implementing nested if else there is a better way which is switch case so here you can see we have a switch case so this is the syntax I will show you in a very easy way so if I have to implement the same program into a switch case so here what happens is I will say this is switch case another conditional statement and here I will say def x equals uh, 10 and then I will take a variable called result and keep it to null and now I will say switch so this is the starting and in the brackets I will say x so it will take the value of x and then curly bracket start and curly bracket stop and inside this we can provide multiple cases and every case can be a condition so if I say case and I say here suppose I say 0 and I will say give a colon and then I will come inside this case and I can give any statements here so I am printing or I will make this result which we have given taken here this result variable equals to x is 0 and then I will give a break so break means once we come inside this case we have to break and we do not need to evaluate any other condition so we can have multiple conditions so here I am saying 0 means if x becomes 0 so we are taking x in switch and if it is 0 it comes here and executes this and then I can also put some conditions in the cases so if I say case and to put a condition I will use a curly bracket and I will say x is greater than 0 and again colon and I will make result equals to x is positive and then again break so now you can understand why we are putting break so for example if this is true it will come here and then it should break so that it does not execute any other cases we do not want it to execute other cases if you do not put a break here it will try to execute and run every case and it will be an overhead so now the next case I want to put is x is less than 0 and if this is true I say result equals x is negative and then break and then we also have a default case so we put default and that means if none of the cases are satisfied or none of the conditions are true I will say result equals to invalid number okay and then after the end of the switch case or after this block I will print 
the value of result whatever is stored so I will print ln result so here let us try to run this I have taken x equals 10 and this should go inside this case which is x greater than 0 and print x is positive so if I run this now you can see it is saying x is positive and if I make x equals to a negative number like minus 10 and run this again here it is printing x is negative now make sure that when you are putting a condition you put inside curly brackets and not circular brackets otherwise it will not be taken into consideration and if I say x equals 0 and run this again here it is saying x is 0 and if I give some invalid uh, value like a string which cannot be calculated and if I run this here it is actually it is uh, giving an exception because it is we are comparing a string with integer so that is why it's an exception however if we give something like uh, let me try to say int x so uh, this should be fine uh, this will come as uh, true yeah this is taken as 0 however in case there is anything which is invalid or cannot be calculated and any of these conditions are not satisfied then it will go to this result and will say invalid number so this is what switch case is and here you can also use regular expressions in the switch case uh, you can use some conditions uh, in the cases so all this is allowed and this is all about the conditional statements in Groovy we have if else and switch case and this is a part of control structures control structures include conditional statements that we have learned now and then we have looping and exception that we will learn in the coming sessions i hope this session was very useful for you thank you for watching